Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this virtual reception. Um, in the perfect situation, we would have been able to get together in person, but with the circumstances being what they are, this is the safest way to do this. And I'm really happy that everybody could join us today on Friday afternoon. So to get us started, I'd like to introduce a few people from our office. With us, we have Ross Johnson, who is the president of Mountain State. We have Taylor Johnson, who is the vice president, and Matt Kearns, who's our business account manager. We also have a few other people who are popping in to attend and watch. So as people are added to this meeting, we will get them accordingly. So to start off, Ross is going to share some opening words with us. Ross? Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we're looking forward to recognizing some outstanding work by some of our favorite charitable organizations. We're joined today by three groups who work, whose work continually supports and improves the lives of many West Virginians. With the ongoing challenges presented by the COVID-19 crisis, many groups have been unable to continue and have been forced to temporarily suspend their services. Both Manamil and Mountaineer Food Bank have had to take on the added burden of those who could no longer receive support from other organizations. While the Charleston Catholic High School Hope Project has had to postpone their annual summer work, the effects of their volunteerism have continued to improve the lives of people in their communities. We're also joined today by Westfield Insurance, uh, whose generosity and dedication to community support enables these groups and many others to further their missions. Each of these three groups are important to me in different ways. I first became familiar with Man and Mill several years ago when I was a mentor for a confirmation class at Christ Church United Methodist and had the opportunity to spend a Saturday volunteering at Man and Mill. Over the years, I've become more interested in the mission of Man and Mill and Mountain State Insurance Agency has had a charitable relationship them for several years. With her location right down the street from our office, I get to witness their work frequently when I'm driving myself to lunch or maybe going. I'm not as familiar with Mountaineer Food Bank, but I see the facilities when I drive to I-79 and see the trucks around the state. I know that Mountaineer Food Bank is a primary source for many local organizations throughout West Virginia. My sons went to Charleston Catholic from, or the Catholic school system rather, from pre-K through 12th grade. Both of them played baseball for Coach May Lee and were students in his theology classes. My son Will was an active participant in the Hope Project for three years and through this group had the opportunity to work in the Clay County community building wheelchair access ramps and re-roofing homes and various other tasks. Both of my sons have benefited greatly from the mentors that have made this project possible for the students. Although we have not been able to participate directly in the HOPE project since my sons graduated from Charleston County, we have continued to support the program financially over the years and greatly admire Coach Maley's dedication to the program. So, Rachel, back to you. Thank you for that, Ross. And I'm going to introduce some of our guests today. With us, we have Amy Wolf from Manameal, Laura Hedrick from Mountaineer Food Bank, Coach Bill Maley and Molly Linehan from Charleston Catholic High School. And of course, we also have Gretchen Long and Brian Bybee from Westfield Insurance. And I know that some of you have brought guests, which is wonderful, and I'm really happy to see everyone here today. I've asked each group to share a little bit about the work they do in our community. Would it be possible to hear from someone from Mountaineer Food Bank? Um, but we really, really greatly appreciate um, the donation that you guys have given us. And especially right now in such a critical time, um, like you spoke of earlier, you know, we have, you know, we always have a lot, you know, we serve 48 out of 55 counties. So the need is always there. But right now it is, it's just been insane. It has been go, 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 go. I mean, we've had the National Guard coming and helping us pack the food boxes. We've had to hire some extra staff just to get the trucks out on the road. And it's, the need has been critical. But what I love about our organization is that we just meet. And it's because of donations from you guys and from a lot of different organizations and businesses and 
it's the community pulling together and helping us go out and serve people. And that's what's really just been amazing. Um, I've actually only been in my position since February. So I literally got, you know, about this much training and then it was like, bam, COVID hit. And so it was great to get to witness exactly what we do. And, um, you know, my position is in development. So really I do more on the fundraising side, but uh, I did get to work pantry. And it was great getting to actually put the food in people's hands and getting the boxes and like how it all works and see the people that we are feeding. And it just, it makes it more real, that experience. Um, and so it's been great. Uh, we do deliver food to over 450 different food pantries and soup kitchens. And so uh, we've got that. We've got our summer feeding program right now, um, which has been really important, especially with school out. You know, a lot of kids, they rely on schools to provide that food for them. And so um, getting to do the backpack program and getting to form boxes for them has been great. Um, same thing, we have, a, we have a veterans program. We tried to cover as much basis as we can right now. And uh, again, the reason we're able to do that is because of donations from people like you. So we are truly, truly grateful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And we're really, really glad to help. And we're very glad that you're here with us today. If we could hear next from some of our guests from Charleston Catholic and the Hope Project. Hi, everybody. My name is and uh, been teaching at Charleston Catholic. For years, actually, just retired from teaching uh, this path at the close of this semester, but I'm going to continue coaching baseball there. Uh, one of my uh, passions and responsibilities has been coordinating our HOPE project. Uh, Charleston has 30 years or so repair project in one of the southern West Virginia counties. Uh, originally, we worked with the Appalachian service project for about 15 years. In the last 15 years, we created our own our program, which we And uh, in summers, we worked in Clay County because of our relationship with uh, some folks in that county, the Catholic Church there. And so each summer, uh, for uh, a week, pretty intense week, we bring a group of usually around 20 students and volunteers. Uh, do substantial repairs on folks from families' houses. So, uh, last time with the and from a volunteer position for construction coordinator, we decided to partner with some folks. Molly, our, our director of campus ministry at Charles, uh, in southern Wayne, Bill and Dickens, and they run the Cowboy Lingo and the Dunlow Community Center. Invited them to join us if they're not able to do so. But they do a lot of work in Southern County and uh, Mingo counties in uh, Southern West Virginia, uh, serving folks in a variety of ways. The bank that they operate there, uh, and they do after school programming for camps, and then summer home repair programs where they host about five hundred. So last year we did that. We're the only West Virginia super parents. I invited some students uh, who uh, who were with us last year, meeting that they, they can share a little bit about experience was impactful for them. And then with students that were going this year until the decision, along with Bill and Addie, our school principal, that we would be able to stay in the home. Um, but we uh, really appreciate the Hill Legacy of support for the program. We committed ourselves to raising $25,000 to fund totally the materials for uh, one low income families, a new house, a modest one. Bill and Addie Likens committed to raising them. House. So both of those are on for this summer, and we plan on, we put the money in, we plan on uh, building that house next summer. So next, and then I know a lot of the students that signed up to go this summer, I'm sure will be anxious to join us. Uh, the, uh, Bill mentioned that they had their monthly food distribution 
food bank there, and they there's been a tremendous upsurge in the need in uh, Mingo and and Wing. There has been around the rest. But yesterday they served 600 families and distributed 65,000 pounds of food families in their area. So, but we greatly support uh, Westfields, and the money will be well used to build build a house for a family in need. Uh, and the Taylor uh, Taylor Johnson and Ross Johnson and they have been tremendously uh, supportive over the years uh, with their financial contributions uh, through Medicaid insurance and, and Taylor family to uh, our work repair each summer. So we greatly support them and other members of our community that enable us to do this service. Um, Molly uh, Lenihan is with us. Uh, and, uh, I don't know if you'd like to say a few words community service at Trump overall. Yeah, so I want to thank you too. I'm Molly Linehan Belcher. I've been with the um, with the whole project for eight years now. That a number of people in our community have really, um, in our Charleston community, have really seen this vision over the years and as a way that we meet the needs of our community. Because of Charleston Catholic, we're a school and we educate students. We recommend educating them simply to to go out. And we wish them well and and to succeed in the world but be people of service that it that success is success toward the common good and so it's really important uh, as they grow to become more and more aware of what their community are uh charleston catholic is grade six so um and each year starting even with the sixth graders they are required to do community service they're required to have half of that be service to um we use the term special needs and being what's... and what can be done for people um we had so the hope project is one of the big ones that we actually sponsor and there are other things that we do hope you we've worked with both clay county and wayne county along the way and we've really tried to we build relationships with the communities that we that we work with so that for year round we know, we learn of what their needs are be it something in clay county following the flood or something right now in wayne county as the needs around covid rise our students have the numbers of community service required during COVID didn't change, um, but of course it became more difficult, especially those things were really pushing them to, to push their boundaries and, and serve those who might be vulnerable. Um, so we very much encourage students to localize and be more organic and recognize who are your neighbors that might be older that have, a, maybe they can't go grocery shopping and can you go and pick up their groceries and that kind of thing. And, kind of awareness um we had students who power wash neighbors houses and things like that just as a, and more organic so the activity of who in my immediate surrounding aren't having their needs met um and then what t tailing we tailoring ourselves identifying some more do service from home and meet needs in the wider community so we had um there were well there were letters some students wrote letters to refugees we worked with an organization the jesuit um organization that sponsors refugees and sent letters to refugees we decorated some students decorated lunch bags and wrote letters to um kids and families who are in ronald mcdonald house um we also actually made a lot many of our students made um meal desserts for man -a meal they actually so they actually um put out an SOS that they needed desserts individually bagged. And so our students were making desserts and things like that from it for um, for local organizations as we learn those needs, things that they can do while they're still while social, keeping that social distance. Um, I don't know if, and I know we have a number of our students I can see along here that Elizabeth Rushworth, Elizabeth K, Emma Semino are all um, on, on the line. I don't know if any of them want to add any, any thoughts to what has been or, for those who haven't done it yet. Yeah, I mean, hope is great. <laughs> hope is great. The year, you know, um, it's really fun. It's not just like the when we go for the week itself, we do a lot of prep uh, fundraising, like spaghetti dinners and, you know, sending out letters to people. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's a great community too, because you get to know everyone that you're going to be going with throughout the year. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just amazing, like family and I mean, we're really missing out on going this year, but hopefully next year we'll be able to pick up right where we left off and have even more money to build even more houses. So I think it'll be great. Okay. Well, I really appreciate those words from both of our groups. Thank you so much for participating with us today.
Next, our friends from Westfield are going to talk just a little bit about their community initiatives within their company. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Brian Bybee. I'm the agency specialist that uh, takes care of West Virginia. And I'm actually calling you from beautiful Philippi, West Virginia, and Barber County today. That's home for me. So uh, I've been with Westfield uh, over 25 years now. I just celebrated 25 years in uh, all in West Virginia. So uh, I've had the, the distinct privilege of working with Ross for probably 20 plus of those years, his roles with, uh, with Westfield and, and uh, have nothing but, but great things to say about him, his staff team over the years. They are top notch, as you all know that already. And I would like to introduce uh, uh, Gretchen Long, who's our community investment leader as well. But um, I got a few points here I just wanted to touch base with everybody on. You know, today's uh, reception illustrates how like-minded Mountain State and Westfield are when it comes to the role we play in the community. Changes, but but caring for our customers and, and our communities never will. You know, Westfield gives more than $3 million per year to impact areas that reflect what the insurance industry does every day. So disaster recovery, uh, family stability, and safety. You know, we invite our best agents to help us have impact in those areas and in, in their communities. With the economic disaster of COVID-19, uh, this program became even more necessary, that being our legacy of caring, and, and thus the, the, the HOPE uh, $5,000 uh, donation. So uh, certainly um, you know, very impressed to hear what you guys have done with that over the years and continue to do. And certainly growing up in, uh, in rural West Virginia and Barber County, believe me, uh, I, I hear you loud and clear on everything you're doing because I live it every day too. And uh, thank you for for what you do. Uh, and and another thing that we wanted to make sure that we uh, we commented on was uh, you know because of COVID, we had to cancel a trip to Bermuda for many of of our agents, and and those agents worked very hard to earn that trip. And and Mountain State generously opted to donate to the community. So instead of receiving it as payment. You know, they they donated it back to the community. And if that wasn't impressive on its own, you know, we were so impressed with their decision to also match uh, our donations to double that total. And, uh, you know, and they selected the perfect recipients, you know, man of meals and, and the food bank complement exactly what we're doing in our headquarters, community and across the country. So, so knowing it's a long road to fully recover, Westfield has increased our giving this year to organizations focused on food insecurity. And uh, we know it is key to helping families and communities overcome the hardships created by COVID-19. So, you know, with with that being said, again, we we are honored and we are privileged to be able to help. And, and we're thankful for partners such as Ross and his team that that continue to shine in the community and provide examples of what true leadership is. And and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, Ross. Thank you from Westfield and your entire staff for what you do every day. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to do it. Gretchen, is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, well, I wasn't actually planning on saying anything because you you said so much that was so perfect about uh, what Westfield does and how we try to partner with our agents. Um, I am curious, are our friends from the food bank able to join? Um, on Manameal's behalf as well, um, for anyone who hasn't seen, Manameal really became uh, kind of a ground zero for those who um, well, are either homeless or in other ways very much disenfranchised. Um, so they immediately, of course, like any other um, uses restaurant, they had to move outside. So they kept their kitchen, they, they cooked inside, but had to move and serve everybody outside. Um, they saw their numbers increase in part because in addition to serving outside, they also had to box up meals and send them over to the men's shelter. The intent there was not to have too many people in one place. So both sent food over to Rourke Sullivan, the men's shelter. They also served people right in their own parking lot. Um, and that went on for two months that they were served. They just put up a large tent and, and 
they also increased the number of meals they by two. So twice a week, they were also serving dinner. Man and meal normally serves breakfast and lunch 365 days a year. They up that now and now serve two more meals. And that really was just about as thin as they could be stretched. They were they put a whole lot in in that short amount of time. Health right also set up shop right in their parking lot and did a whole lot of testing, being sure that really some of our most vulnerable people in Charleston had their needs met. So thank you so much for your support of another great organization we're really grateful what a that's an incredible connection that that would happen right in high school um so all i all i wanted to add really is um watching this is so amazing thank you so much for inviting me uh, for all of you i'm actually in northeast ohio where westfield's headquarter headquarters are um what is so special to personally about the three organizations that through our relationship in Mountain State that Westfield's foundation was able to give to um, is seeing the um, young people who are on this call and how they're um, getting excited about community service and seeing the value. I was one of those young people who went on trips such as you're talking about. Um, and now this work that I have the pleasure of doing on behalf of an insurance company, which is to um, to manage a private foundation and volunteer activities, it all came full circle. As Westfield said, disasters are what we do every day, whether it is a um, somebody's car accident, a tornado, or um, something as gigantic as the flood that happened in 2016 in West Virginia, um, and I believe Clay County would have been the one that's affected. I learned um, that that work that I did as a teenager through the faith communities is something that is so important to rebuilding after weather related events. Um, and now we're in this space of an economic disaster um, where really all things are coming together. Everybody is working and whether you're um, helping a family that was in need before this all happened, what I've learned in the work that I'm doing and talking to Feeding America of which the food bank is a member um, is that um, uh, the, the need that has increased, I learned that at least 30% of the families that needed food um, immediately following um, the middle of March had never received help from any nonprofit organization before. And um, so the work that MANA did, um, being the type of direct services provider, how that normally travels from Feeding America food bank, which is normally sending money, sending product out for an organization like MANA to distribute to become, um, basically the food banks became drive-throughs. So really seeing everybody on this call right now, you are bringing to life everything that I've been reading about, learning about um, over the past couple of months to see everything come together. So thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you to everyone. Um, this has been really gratifying. Uh, in advance of the meeting, I didn't have the foresight to uh, to expect Charleston Catholic High School students, and I really appreciate you uh, participating. As I've sat here and listened to this, you know, I've I've uh, thought about resilience and the circumstances we're in, and, and I'm confident we're all going to come out of this just fine. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the realizations I just had thinking about this pandemic and I was thinking, okay, I want to make some remarks at the end. Westfield's been solving people's problems, solving their disaster since 1848. Um, has been a bellwether for that purpose. Been through many storms, been through pandemics, and so, and we'll be here for the next one. Mount State Insurance was actually started during the uh, flu pandemic of 1917. So, uh, so you know, we've come through that one. We came through the Hong Kong flu in 1968. We've come through lots of disasters in West Virginia, and you know, we've been right here in the Canal Valley since uh, for 102 years or nearly 103 years. So now I'm going to go back to my prepared script. Um, Mountain Mill and Mountaineer Food Bank are both instrumental in supporting those in our community who are food insecure. As we've seen in this post. Pandemic food insecurity can happen to anyone at any time. 
We are fortunate to have these two groups to support those who need help and the efforts of the volunteers truly impacts many lives. The Charleston Catholic High School Hope Project not only works to improve the quality of life for families, but also provides a wonderful experience for the students who participate, including my own kid. The hard work of the teachers and volunteers set an example for the students to follow throughout their lives. I would also like to thank our partners at Westfield Insurance for your continued commitment to community support and their incredible generosity during this time of uncertainty and struggle, and particularly to the people of West Virginia. Westfield sets an example for the entire insurance industry with their dedication to community involvement. Know that while the news stories may have died down, there is still a lot of work to be done. Confident that this contribution will serve a great many West Virginia families and that these organizations will continue to shine in our community and state. So uh, many thanks to you and uh, keep doing all the great things you're doing and we'll continue to keep on doing our part.